Hello YouTube and welcome to another Doctor Who Big Finish review. It's that time of the month again to take a look at the monthly range and this time it is 214 and Life of Crime. It is sort of the start to the 7th Doctory sort of series that we've got going on at the moment and I do believe it goes on up until September, October time. Also last time we had the Master Trilogy finally coming to an end and that was exciting and had Sylvester McCoy in that as well but I'm sort of keeping that away from this because of course we didn't have Ace in that so it's sort of separate from these audios and this is sort of the start to sort of the new era with Ace and Mel together on the TARDIS, which is rather interesting. The episode's written by Matt Fitton, who is one of my favourite Big Finish writers, and I'm glad that he's on the monthly range, because I don't quite know how long it's been since he's been on the monthly range last. I think it may have been Criss Cross or something like that um, in the Sixth Doctor era. Don't quote me on that one, though. But yeah, this one is a lot different from what we've seen before. Of course, last time we had the Master Trilogy, which with that I sort of knew what to expect, because it is, of course, the Master. So, um, yeah, it wasn't really predictable, of course, because the Master was in it. I generally knew sort of what I was in for with it. But yeah, this one is completely different, and much like the rest of the monthly range, um, I guess they sort of introduced new villains into it, which is nice to see. I don't think these ones have been in Big Finish before. And um, yeah, it's another one of those creative ones that actually fits in really well with the Seventh Doctor era. I think the thing with the Seventh Doctor era on the show is that it's a lot different from all the others. And ones that stand out to me, although that some people don't like them, the Happiness Patrol, the Candyman. I love that episode. Some people really hate it, don't really know why. But we have like a giant licorice all sort man being mental, killing people, which was great. I love that story. Another ones that stand out is um, The Greatest Show in the Galaxy see a very underrated one that was about a circus going a bit unpopular and um, it wasn't all of what it used to be a, a bit like how the show was at the actual time so it was very clever the way that that was written this one fits into that very very well because and um, we have a series of course of ace and the doctor traveling together um, and mel comes into it after of course leaving in Dragonfire, she goes off with savlon glitz who was in trial for time lord of the sick doctor and then um, we then met up with him again in Dragonfire. but by the end of that mel went off with him to go and sort of explore the universe but it turns out that she's sort of got a bit in trouble with money with him and a few crime things which of course leads into the story itself and uh, yeah I thought that this one fits in very well with the format of the Seventh Doctor era especially the later on Seventh Doctor era around the 25th anniversary I think that it works very well because and um, we had like a giant raccoon man which I think worked brilliantly and um, he was sort of like the mayor so I thought that that fitted the idea really well. This episode's set on Rakosta which is this sort of retirement planet in a way it sort of reminds me of a Dubai in a way of course on the cover we have all palm trees and things and um, it looks very nice and tropical in a way but yeah sort of like a retirement area sort of a bit like sort of maybe a bit of america in there as well really and i um, mean it's very alien it's something that once again i give matt and credit for because i felt like we were in i felt like he sort of built up a world i really did enjoy the episode from that perspective and to the plot itself um as i already said the context it is basically about a retirement planet and um, with a lot of crime and stuff going on very interesting i think that it's a great idea because um it's something i feel that is once again as i said very sort of to the time of what this year will be set in but as well sort of quite modern i think that they couldn't really get away with this in the actual tv show because they had like a few flying car type things i do believe quite a lot of transferring scenes going between different places and um, a few sort of foreign areas i do believe that the next one's in fact set in spain with the monthly range so yeah, we're going very foreign apart from england and um, with this one which is nice to see and um, in a few alien places so this one i do really like it to that extent because i think that um as i said matt finn actually built up a actual planet and i did believe it i felt that we knew a bit about the people a bit about the customs there and it was a way of going there when you're retired to sort of set up a business set up sort of a relaxation for your later on later selves in life and then of course with that also became a lot of business and a lot of money and basically a very corrupt society which um the own mayor which as i said is sort of like a raccoon man which i think is brilliant because you're on big finish so why not have a raccoon man i think that it works very well i think why have sort of bog standard humanoid people when you can have like a giant humanoid animal being the mayor of a planet i think that works very well and something that um, if the new series had more of a budget and actual sort of adventurous tastes in it i think that's something that they should do as well i think that the fact of having a raccoon man as the mayor and um, he was very corrupt he was um, sort of um, being a businessman with the aliens of the story so he in himself wasn't really a very good mayor but i think that once again it shows that big finish they want to make it an alien type of thing so why have tons of humanoids when you can have as i said animals in there and it worked very well i liked that and once again proves how big finish take a sort of a different approach to doctor who moving on to the characters this one is quite character based we have sort of quite a small cast i would say we don't really have many extras in this of course we have a few screaming people and we don't really have many people that were introduced to that then die and we don't really care about them in any way but i think that it's got sort of got it's sort of got quite a tight cast and 
even on the cast on the actual website for a monthly range story. They're normally about this thick, a paragraph I would say. This one's got sort of only a three liner, four liner um, cast. So I think that yeah, it works well for this one because um, of course we have Mel played by Bonnie Langford, um, which I wasn't really too keen on her in the actual series. Let's be honest, she's not really the most like best of companions, is she? But once again, big finish of Tucker on and she works very well. She's had a few episodes of Colin as well as Sylvester and they've actually sort of gone into her character a lot more. For example, in this story, we had her cracking a bank safe in order to sort of get some money to sort of help her out of financial trouble. And then once again, because if you, in case you didn't know, as much as Mel looked like an absolute bumbling idiot and like with these massive pad and things, she looked a bit like a fitness fanatic in a way sort of. Um, she was also a computer scientist -y person that knew a lot about computers. Did you guess that? No. Neither did I when I first seen her, but that was apparently what she was. With this, once again, that was something that was left behind in the actual TV show and she just screamed a lot. But with this, straight away, we had an example of that, her using the actual things that she has. Once again, reminding me of something like Clara in The Bells of St. John. For some reason, she was very technological based. She knew exactly what to do on a computer. And um, for some reason, after The Bells of St. John, that never really came up again. Still don't understand that to this day, where all of that internet idea of things went. Really confused by that to this day, still gotta be honest. But yeah, I think that Series 7 and Clara had a lot of flaws, let's face it, even though I do like Clara to an extent, she did have a lot of flaws as a companion. Georgia is ace, brilliant as usual, I really did enjoy her in the story. She had a few great lines in there, once again, her relationship with the Synth Doctor is just brilliant. I think that she has one of the best relationships with the Doctor, much like I think a lot of the 80s companions do, much like Perry and the Sixth Doctor. I really like their relationship, I think that it's different, it's something new, and um, for Obisher as well, something new, Flip, something new. I think that with the 80s, especially on Big Finish, they went very adventurous with the companions. Ace is one of them straight away. I think that it's strange because in the actual TV series, Ace was one of those characters that got padded quite a lot with a ton of backstory, such as Gabriel Chase in Ghostlight and her family background and things. Although it wasn't sort of approached as much in the series, we got to know a lot about her in about three series worth. And Seventh Doctor was also great for this story, as usual. I love Sylvester McCoy. I think that he's a very underrated Doctor, much like Colin as well. I think that two, those two 80s Doctors are very, very underrated. I think the Peter Davison's era isn't really underrated too much because I honestly think it's quite a weak one, um, all except Caves of Andrew Zani, Resurrection, things like that. Honestly, Sylvester, I do adore him. I think that he's brilliant on Big Finish, much like any Doctor. I've not came across any Doctor that is bad on Big Finish, to be honest. I think they're all great on there. This is one of those stories, once again, that if you're new to Big Finish, I wouldn't recommend this one. This is definitely a story for those people that know the monthly range quite well. Of course, and the monthly range can be a bit of a strength for people, as it is essentially a two-hour-ish story, um, half an hour-ish per episode. And um, yeah, it can be a struggle for some people. Personally, to some extent, I do quite like the box set format more, such as the War Doctor and the Dark Eyes sort of format to that running length. And as well, like The Last Adventure, I really like those quite tight, confined stories, or even the Jago Lightfoot format. And I do believe about an hour as well. But yeah, I think that with the monthly range, if you've got a good plot, such as the two masters um, from the last review, I think that it works very well. I think that it's great. I think that that could have been padded out in places a little bit more. And there's a few confusing parts. But with this one, I would say, as I said, I don't recommend it for people who are wanting to get into Big Finish and um, straight away I think that you need to know what to expect from the monthly range as in quite a lot of characters quite a lot of word dialogue in there start with the very start of the story is a bit padded I think that it doesn't really start straight away to this is what we're doing I think that it's sort of a slow burner for the first one or two episodes but once we get to sort of a very interesting part at the end of part two I think it is it sort of hypes a little bit and gets a little bit more interesting and I think that generally I think that it sort of steps away from the formats that we've seen with Matt Fitton in the past. I think that he is um, sometimes stuck to a format that's quite similar, but I think that with this one, he definitely tried out a few new formats, which I think that it worked well to an extent. He sort of learnt probably from a few of his mistakes that he didn't like too much from the response of this episode. And yeah, I really do credit him for actually giving it a chance because um, I think that it's definitely something different from what he's done in the past, and I really do give him credit for that. He's being adventurous, good, and it's not like it was a bad story because it, um, fair dues, some parts weren't exactly the best, such as a sort of slow part to start with, but I still feel that it was a good story. He didn't pad it out too much in parts, but it was still enjoyable. Moving on to a character that has quite a big influence in the story, Gloria. 
Um, I enjoyed running the story. I think that for the people who are very strict to regeneration rules, will be very intrigued by this one. And if you don't want to know what I'm about to say about this episode, it's quite a big spoiler, I would recommend clicking off this video. Basically, Gloria is a bit of a crime person. She likes to sort of get into a bit of trouble, get into a bit of financial robbery and things like that. And um, yeah, she basically stages the Seventh Doctor being shot down and um, have a regeneration scene. And we do go to the extent of having her pretending to be Sylvester McCoy, regenerating the other sort of a bit of a gold effect and Ace sees this from the very distance and it is in fact a stage regeneration to make it look like that she has in fact changed into the Doctor and for a part of the story she pretends to be the Doctor and um, hence on the cover why she's wearing the Seventh Doctor's hat and um, yeah it's very interesting for those people who don't want a female Doctor and um, I guess that this is a bit of an example into what in fact will be like or other examples could include Unbound um, but yeah I think that it was an interesting idea and once again sort of foreshadowed the very start of the story and um, with Lolligan who um, he died or they staged his death when he didn't in fact die um, and I think it's very interesting the way that they did it it worked very well Gloria as a character I don't think that um, well I think that she had a few parts that she could have been improved on I didn't really think her character was as sort of interesting to start with once we got a bit into the end I did enjoy her a little bit more but yeah I don't think it's the end of her yet because the very end of the story she's going to track down Mel Bush because um, she did something relating to a bank and I do believe stealing a bit of her money or something so she's going to go around trying to track her down and now that she's with the doctor again um, after being abandoned by Savlon Glitz on the planet and um, she basically goes off at the end of the story with the seventh doctor and Ace to go on some adventures with them so yeah I'm guessing that we're not going to see the end of Gloria with this episode and she'll no doubt be back in a future one. Moving on to the villain of the story the Spyrovore basically there are these villain people who want a lot of money on the planet and um, they're basically some robbers basically of an alien nature and um, I would say the sound design's a little bit weird for them I'm um, not gonna lie I, I think especially to the start of the story when we first got to hear about them I think they're quite hard to understand I think that the sound design for them is great they sound very alien but there was a bit of an extent where I couldn't exactly understand what they are saying and um, I think that that sort of padded out a little bit to the end of the story once again I could sort of hear them a little bit more as I adjusted to the voice but I think that straight away it's a bit of a jump and um, they're a little bit hard to hear in parts and sort of a little bit sort of bumbly and um, you'll understand if you actually hear them from the trailer and things if they're in the trailer I can't remember but yeah they're a little bit sort of um, hard to understand I would say that but generally they're a good villain they attack the planet basically because their financial thing hasn't been fulfilled by the raccoon man who ends up dying and um, yeah they basically shut down the planet for closed for business so from the outside it looks like um, business is going on as usual but they just shut it off for a little bit as they normally do but in fact what they're doing is the spiral are taking over the planet and killing everybody for financial debts and they're basically using this liquidation thing to liquefy people and um, how lovely of them but yeah um, I enjoyed them in the story I think that once again um, there was something new and I enjoyed them in it I think that they don't really have much of a future though and um, I'm thinking that they may come back as um, they did have a few things with the doctor near the end where he sort of forgave them and saved the villain and then um, he was like some days that you actually need to save the baddies as well or something like that which I liked I'm actually going to reference much of the end of the story because I think that would sort of ruin it to an extent but yeah and um, basically the the ending of the story has a bit of a relation with Savlon Glitz I and mean, he's not in the story at all but yeah the doctor basically sets up something and that's all that I'm going to say I will leave the rest for you to find out on that part but yeah it's a very interesting sort of prequel to episodes that we've already seen I guess does that make sense sort of so over off this story, honestly, I think that it's not one of those ones for people that are just getting into Big Finish. I think that especially at the moment, there is a lot of other content out there, Big Finish wise. That is the perfect jumping on point, including the 10th Doctor box set and the upcoming Classic Doctor's New Monsters one and probably several other ones out there. I think that the monthly range is possibly one of the hardest ways you could get into the um, Big Finish line because, as I said, it is two hours long, so it can be a bit of a put off strain to an extent. Um, but yeah, I think that it's an OK story if you know your stuff with the monthly range you will enjoy it and um, I think that if you've seen Matt Fitton's stuff in the past you sort of know what to expect to an extent but you will see the way that he's changed around his writing format to an extent as well which is nice to see I love to see the big finish writers actually experiencing and doing different things because it's being adventurous it's being a risk and I like that because it shows that they're actually caring and they want to try something new out which is something that can't be said for other writers in other TV shows because they want to play it too safe but with this I think that it works brilliantly and um, I wouldn't really recommend it is is by far not the best story of this year master trilogy was a little bit more up there and there's been a few more powerful stories in the monthly range this year such as the peter lee massacre and um, which i funny enough didn't review but i did really enjoy that one um and um yeah i think that generally as 
I said, it's not the best of stories, but it's not the worst. I think it's a nice average story. It's a good sort of reshaping of actual Doctor Who at that time. I think that it fits in brilliantly with the era. And yeah, it's just one of those ones. I think that if you're experienced with Big Finish, you'll certainly enjoy this episode a lot more than a newcomer would. Next episode of the Monkey Fringe is episode 215, and it is the Fiesta of the Damned, where the Seventh Doctor Mel and Ace go off to Spain. So that'll be exciting. It's written by Guy Adams. Yeah, I'm quite intrigued on that one. It looks very interesting, especially by the cover. Very retro. So yeah, I'm looking forward to where they go with the Seventh Doctor Mel and Ace next, because Ace didn't really seem too happy that Mel came back, really. I don't really think their relationship is too strong. But yeah, I'm intrigued to see, and I guess I will see you all next time for that review when I review it. But no doubt in that time, there'll also be a review of Classic Doctor's New Monster which probably by the amount of times I've mentioned it in several of the videos, I'm very excited for it. Very, very excited. I can't wait. It's going to be great. And but yeah, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please do give it a big like and please subscribe if you're not already. If any questions, please do leave them below and be sure to answer them at some point in the near future. Thanks again for watching. I shall see you all next time. So thanks for watching and bye for now.